Greetings from the Jazz Cloud. I'm Richie Zellen and I want to welcome you to the Jazz Guitar Channel for a very special lesson. Today we are going to learn an alternative system of using scales for jazz improvisation. And it just so happens that Miles Davis was busy studying and practicing this concept during the period before he recorded Kind of Blue back in 1959. Unless you're a total newbie to jazz, you should be aware that this is one of the most influential recordings in the history of jazz, not to mention the one with the most sales to date. So I'm sure we can all benefit from learning what Miles was exploring musically speaking during the period that led to Kind of Blue. And I'm referring to the Lydian chromatic concept. The Lydian chromatic concept was developed by jazz pianist and composer George Russell and first published in 1953. It came about as a result of a conversation he had with Miles back in 1945. At the time, Miles implied the need to relate to chords in a different way when improvising through the changes. And this was the bebop era and jazz improvisation was focused on a vertical approach to the chord changes. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So an example of uh, improvising with a vertical focus would be when we um, basically rely on the arpeggio to bring out the sound of the uh, true chord that we're uh, soloing against, for example, a D major 7. Or a uh, C minor. And by a horizontal focus, I mean playing in more of a linear uh, scalar fashion, you know. What Russell did for improvisation was to develop an alternative to the vertical approach and through his concept shifted the focus to a horizontal one. And this in turn influenced the development of modal jazz, which is what Miles introduced on Kind of Blue. In a nutshell, George Russell found that instead of the conventional Ionian or major scale, the Lydian scale should be viewed as the tonic or central scale in a major tonality. As a result, Miles is known to have summarized the Lydian chromatic concept by stating that F should be where middle C is on the piano. Wow. And the reason behind this is because it corresponds with the order in which the overtone series, the harmonic overtone series, introduces intervals. If we examine the overtone series, we'll notice that the perfect fifth is its foundation. As the lowest available interval, it is also the strongest in terms of defining tonal gravity. Consequently, by stacking seven consecutive fifths over any given note, Russell noticed that the seven tones of a Lydian scale were the outcome and not those of the Ionian or major scale. So next I'm going to show you how we end up with the, um, the notes of the Lydian by stacking perfect fifths on top of each other using a given root. And since this is obviously not a piano, for this example, I'm going to use the open E string, which will in turn allow for a broad range needed to demonstrate this. So here we go. E is our root. Here we have a perfect fifth. Now I'm going to stack another perfect fifth here, another one, so, and now I'm going to take those same notes and reorganize them within 
one chord, an E chord, and for the most part, uh, the structure is going to be based on uh, thirds, except for the first two notes. That's a fifth, and that's the foundation. That's the seventh, the third of the chord. You can call that the sixth or thirteen. That's the two, which is acting as a nine. And there's the sharp four, which in this case would be acting as a sharp eleven. As most of you already know, the Ionian mode has a perfect fourth, which is sometimes called an avoid note. And this occurs because it lies half step above the major third due to which it clashes. The use of the Lydian, among other factors, solves this problem because it has a sharp four, or what is also known as a tritone. Having said that, if you're not familiar with the Lydian, you can simply think of it as a major scale with a sharp four. As a result, there are no avoid notes. You can improvise and sit on any note as long as you like when using the scale without the fear of it clashing with its related chord. Based on the theory described, George Russell went on to codify a system which allows you to superimpose a Lydian-related scale when improvising over any chord. Even though George Russell lists seven principal scales in this system, I'm going to show you only five, which I find to be the most important and frequently used ones. And that's because I believe you can solo over the majority of standards using just these, as I will later demonstrate. I'm going to play all of these with the root in C for easy comparison. And notice that they all have in common a sharp four, which forms a tritone with the root. Uh, this is a defining characteristic of the scales in this system. And I'm going to play these uh, starting each root with my Charlie Parker finger. <laughs> <laughs> the central one is, of course, the Lydian, and it's comprised of its root two, three, sharp four, five, six, and seven. The second one is the uh, Lydian augmented, and the only difference between this one and the one I just played is that we're going to race the uh, fifth uh, half step up. So, root, two, three, Sharp four, sharp five, six, seven, and root. The third one is the Lydian dominant, and for this one, all we're doing in relationship to the original Lyd Lydian is we're flatting the seventh. Everything else remains the same. So, root, two, three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven, root. Let's learn how to employ these over various chord types. For a major seven chord, we want to use the Lydian starting on its root. So if I'm playing a, I would simply play C Lydian. For a major seven sharp five chord, we use the Lydian augmented starting again on its root. So for this chord, or this one, we would play.
play. For the uh, dominant 7 sharp 11 chord, we can use the uh, Lydian dominant again starting on the root of the chord. Alternatively, we can use a Lydian augmented a whole step below, which for this chord would be and the remaining scales require that you superimpose the scale over a different root. So for a dominant seventh chord, we superimpose the Lydian a whole step below its root. So for C7, we're going to play B flat Lydian. Now, for a dominant 7 flat 9 or an altered chord, we superimpose the Lydian augmented a major third of the Next, I want to show you how to apply the scales and their application within the context of a couple of standards. I'm just going to name the chords to each progression as I play the corresponding Lydian chromatic scale while you hear the harmony in the background. Note that I'm not going to improvise over them because I explicitly want you to hear how each note of the superimposed scale blends with the harmony. If you're interested in getting deeper into this, you can download a set of PDFs from my website which contains the changes to six standards with their corresponding Lydian chromatic scale. The six standards included are Autumn Leaves, all the Things You Are, Stella by Starlight, Blue Bossa, Girl from Ipanema, There Will Never Be Another You, and Dolphin Dance. There is also a PDF with the different Lydian scale variations described previously, as well as a chart on how to use them with each chord type, even those not included here. And you can download it for a very nominal contribution from jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium. And I want to thank wholeheartedly those of you who do because your contribution helps support the production of these weekly lessons. Next, I'm going to show you first how to use the concept over a simple chord progression. And I've chosen the changes to Duke Ellington's Take the A Train. So for the first two chords, I'm basically going to stay over the same root, only that I'm going to erase the fifth a half step up when I go to the uh, second chord, which is D7 sharp 11. Uh, that provides a lot of economy of motion and uh, thought and everything, because uh, I've got uh, four measures where I'm just going to think over the same uh, key center here. So this is what it sounds like. One, two, a uh, one, two, three, four. Second four measures. Now we're going to the two five D minor seven to G seven, which I'm playing with a ninth here. I'm just going to use the F Lydian for both chords. So that brings me back then to the C major seven, and again has a two five going back to the beginning. Let me play those uh, four measures so you can hear 
how the uh, Lydian scales blend with the changes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the A section. And with that, we're ready to examine the bridge. And really, there's not much to say here because the bridge has four measures of F major seven for which I simply play an F Lydian. Then it goes to uh, D7 for two measures. And I usually play either a uh, C Lydian or C Lydian augmented here if I want to bring out the uh, sharp 11 in the D7 chord. And I end with the same 2-5 I've had at the beginning with the F Lydian. So just uh, two scales again for eight measures, F Lydian for the first four, C Lydian or C Lydian augmented for the D7, and again F Lydian for the last two. And I'm not going to say anything about the last uh, eight measures because it's just a repetition of the first eight. That covers Take the A Train. Before I show you the application of this concept to a modern, sophisticated progression, I want to give you my personal assessment of this system. I honestly don't think this system is very effective over your typical bebop tunes, that is, consisting of a lot of two fives packed into most of the measures. The moment you stop thinking vertically over the chords in such tunes, you lose the bebop feel and its definition because the solos turn very horizontal or scalar. As a result, the chords are no longer outlined by the arpeggio. This was meant mainly to be used over modal tunes like those that Miles recorded on Kinda Blue. And these are tunes where the chords last for at least a measure or more. And that in turn allows more time for the scale to convey the full sound of the related harmony. However, this doesn't mean you can't use it over portions of standards that you see fit in combination with the conventional bebop approach. Now, if you're just starting out with jazz, I don't recommend attempting to use this system from the get-go instead of learning how to first use your arpeggios as the main focus, like Miles and others have done. You will also find that you are adding an extra step when having to superimpose your scales to start on a different route than that of the chord you are soloing over. Furthermore, this can create unwanted confusion because you have no idea at first what true interval of the related chord your notes represent. So basically you are just using your ear at first. If on the other hand you already know your arpeggios and have been using them for years, it won't take long to see how the Lydian superimposed scale overlaps with the notes in the true chord. Now, many years ago while living in Boston, I had the good fortune to play in a group with a pianist who studied with George Russell at the New England Conservatory. And he showed me over what type of tunes I could best use this system to my advantage. And they are primarily post-bop tunes that are not always based on conventional functional harmony. Think Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, of course, Miles' compositions after Kind of Blue. And for you fusion guitarists, I would include the compositions of Alan Holdsworth. These are tunes, like I said earlier, where the harmony either modulates a lot or the chords might not be functionally related. And also, usually, they last for a measure or more. One such tune that I love is Dolphin Dance by Herbie Hancock. And next, I want to show you how I use the Lydian chromatic concept over it, both to better convey the mood of the tune and at the same time to simplify how I get around the changes. So once again, I'm not going to improvise over the changes. I'm just going to play the chord and then play the uh, corresponding uh, Lydian chromatic scale so you can hear the relationship between the uh, changes and the uh, color tones.
So what do you think? Is the Lydian chromatic concept something that you would consider incorporating into your playing? There are and have been many controversies among jazz musicians regarding this system. So I'd love to hear your comments. Also, if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel, please subscribe and click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming lessons. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Until then, hasta la vista, portense bien, and stay safe.